Hi right, guys, welcome back to Fusion Fat Loss and Nutrition Transform You, the online program. So far, we've uh, undertaken a hell of a lot of information and um, you may not have been able to process it all and that's good guys because remember that these are yours forever and I recommend heavily that you review them as frequently as you deem necessary to keep you aligned to your goal and taking you closer to where you want to be and again avoiding sabotaging yourself. In session two or lecture two, we talked about in um, one of the slides, plateaus and embracing them because there is no doubt in the world that one of the things that you'll uh, come face to face with on your journey is this, a plateau. You'll be eating well, you'll be training frequently, you'll feel good. But in regards to your physique transformation, you won't see the changes that you want happening as quickly as you want them to happen. You can hit um, the handbrake. Therefore, there's things you need to be able to see and there's things you need to be able to do to alter the strategy and tactic to elicit a response that allows you to get closer to where you want to be again. But the only way, and I hasten to say and underline with vigor, only way that you're going to be aware this is happening and be able to fix it is if you're testing and measuring. So let's have a look as we progress through the second last lesson. A lesson plateaus are part of the process, understanding fat loss plateaus, and most importantly, how to break them. Let's go, guys. So the dreaded fat loss plateau. Understanding them, they are very common, the reasons they occur, the three types of plateaus and the different strategies that we can use to break those individual plateaus, what to do to get back on track and to kick the plateau to the gutter forever, and what not to do ever, the secret. So these are all things we'll discuss in our uh, up and coming journey. The dreaded fat loss plateau continued. Psychological versus physical. So it comes back to that mind massage thing, doesn't it? Remember, I've talked about it so, so, so very frequently for good reason. You don't fail because you're not trying. You fail because you're not mentally in it and you don't know how to test and measure what you need to be recording, avoiding that negative uh, subconscious language. All of those things relate to mind massage. When you are stuck, that's when you must stay focused. Recommit and align to the equation and be positive. Because remember, recommitting and aligning to your equation and being positive is recommitting to reconnecting with your life. Discouragement and frustration causes so many to give up, even though they are so very close to their dreams and goals. The amount of times, guys, that if you just hung in there another week, another month, that you would be on a completely different side of the scale in regards to where you sit physically and emotionally. People, so many people give up because they are not patient. And remember, one of the things we've discussed so frequently is being patient. An extra dose of persistence and attitude adjustment and change is all that is required for you to succeed. Plateaus are very common, own that and expect that. In big, bold, black letters, plateaus are very common, own it and expect them to occur. Embrace them when they do because you guess what you're going to have? Tools and weaponry to be able to get you out of the hole. Once you accept that they are a common practice in the weight loss and fat loss journey, it won't bother you as much because once again, you'll have the strategy, the tactics, the answers to get yourself out of them, but only if you commit and readjust and adjust in the behavior, attitudes, and actions. Make an adjustment and keep me moving forward towards your goal. And remember, the answer is this, mind massage, nutrition, exercise, panel beta, fat burning cardio, recovery, plus Commit uh, your actual community support and applied action. The answer will always align in that equation forever. When it's obvious that the goals cannot be reached, don't adjust the goals, adjust the action steps. I was discussing this with a client yesterday, as in session two of this uh, wonderful Transform You program, this same picture comes up. When it's obvious that the goals that cannot be reached, don't adjust the goal, adjust the action steps. Because if you've made the decision that this is your goal, why would you give up on it? Isn't it important to you anymore? 
The reality is, of course it is. The reality is that this, it's just a bit difficult. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. Everything that's hard is great. Remember that. If it was important to you in the first place, it's important to you now. Make an adjustment in the approach. Change the strategy. Change the tactics. Get the, the, aligned to that equation. Get some communal support and get some mentorship. You will get there if it means enough to you. The reasons. So as we looked earlier, the psychological and physical, we look at the psychological ones. Lack of compliance. There it is. You just didn't try hard enough for long enough. Is the biggest reason for plateaus. Don't reinvent the wheel. Adopt it. Test and measure regularly to adjust. You simply didn't follow the plan close enough, and you and you may well not have realized it. This is the funny thing, guys. In week one, two, three, we go through you know things like the pillars and avoiding self sabotage, changing your language, becoming more of an optimist rather than a pessimist, uh, documenting things, sending photos through regularly, keeping food diaries, you know, taking some photos of yourself, doing these things that align you, action steps that hold you accountable and show you whether it's working or not. Somewhere along the line, people start to cut corners, and those surface cracks become crevices before you can blink. And all of a sudden, you wake up one day and you go, how the hell did I get back here? Because you're not testing and measuring. That is important. Check regularly so bad habits don't form and you're not traveling blind. Recall the equation. Yes, there it is again, the equation. Week one, week two, week three, right through to week 11 where we are now, I've mentioned this equation. And everything you do is driven by this equation. Mind massage. Do you have a current set of goals in writing that you're reading daily and becoming? It's not a rhetorical question, guys. I'm asking you it. Write down the answer. Panel beating. Are you following your program to the letter and documenting each and every session for your own individual records? Is the program you're following tailored for you? Again, not a rhetorical question. Answer it. Fat burning cardio. Is your cardio focused to your goal? Are you training for fat loss or are you training for fitness? There's a huge difference. And remember, we covered that in the cardio uh, lecture. Is it hit? High intensity interval training, or is it LSD, long, slow distance work? Answer those questions, guys, because the answers that you're putting down on paper are going to be the answers to why you may well be in a plateau. Nourishing, yes, nutrition. Are you hitting your meal compliance targets each and every day? Start with the portion control method that we've discussed previously in your protein, carbs, and fats. So go back, look at them. Is every meal you're consuming with a construction of PCO36, protein, carbohydrate, and those essential fats, your omega-3 and 6? Applied action. This is meaning you need to own your goal and be self-accountable. It won't just happen magically if you do something sometimes. You must be honest with yourself always. Just, you know, if you're operating five out of seven, five days a week, you're committing to your goals, you'll get some goals, but they won't be the ceiling. You'll never achieve optimally. And that's fine if you're honest with yourself. This is not a 60 or 70% out of 100% accountability, guys. To achieve what you're after and to maintain it for life, it's a minimum 80% investment in you. And that aligns to all of those things we've discussed so far. Mind massage, panel beating, the right type of aerobic activity, nourishing with fork, applied action, and now community. Associate with climbers, not pullers. You want to be with people that push you closer to where you want to be, not challenge your, your goals and not tell you you can't achieve. That's horrendous. If you want it, align to people who believe it and will support you along the way. Have a community that inspires you and assists in motivating you. Get re-motivated and re-enthused. You deserve success, don't you? Again, it's not a rhetorical question. Don't you deserve to be happy? Don't you deserve to look the way you want to and feel the way you want to? The people that are looking and feeling the way they want to do the things that we've just discussed. The answer will always be in that equation. 
Your body doesn't like changing. Tightly regulated. What does that mean? Well, it's going to cost the body a lot to change. Isn't that what we're after? A calorie expense? If we can get a further calorie expense by doing things we don't do often, that's going to mean that the body has to spend more energy. We win. However, changing is difficult for a lot. It's like being a weed in a garden bed. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. Get into that garden bed, rip that weed out, and there's a void. Put a beautiful, succulent, gorgeous flower in there to take its place. What am I talking about? I'm talking about remove the self-harm crap, self-pity talk and replace it with positive affirmations of why you will achieve, why you deserve to achieve and why you can do this. Your body adapts hormonally and metabolically to diet and weight loss. The more you restrict calories and the more weight you lose, the slower your metabolism becomes. If all else is equal and you have remained compliant to your plan, a plateau means your body has adapted. It's time to change something. So the reality is as you lose weight, your body becomes uh, has a lower basal metabolic rate. So if you're 120 kilos and you get down to 100 kilos, you need to feed 100 kilos, not 120 kilos. Your basal metabolic rate slows. So if you're hitting a plateau, quite simply, these things are occurring. You're eating too much or not moving enough or not eating enough or maybe moving too much. Very complicated, isn't it? So we'll look at reasons and how to get yourself out of that and to find which one is really the reason you're sitting where you are. And I think this picture tells it all. Frustration, it's part of the process. Why am I doing it wrong? And I hope you're giggling at this, guys, because again, it will become a reality. You will face these conundrums the longer you're um, involved in the body transformation game and aligning to your health, wellness, mental and physical success and stability. So why does this metabolic adaptation occur? Metabolic slowdown. You weigh less, so your body needs less. We've discussed that. Smaller people learn, uh, burn, sorry, burn, spend less energy. So the more weight you lose, the harder it gets to continue losing weight. But isn't it great to be in a good place where you are losing this weight? Of course it is for most of us. Number two, adaptive thermogenesis. A big name, but all it means is this. A complex weight regulating mechanism involving numerous hormones and body systems becoming more efficient. Sorry, guys. A complex weight regulating mechanism involving numerous hormones and body systems becoming more efficient. Yes, the body turns the calories and fat burning hormones down and the hunger hormones up. Your body becomes more efficient, burns fewer calories, whilst simultaneously tricking you into eating more. Who needs enemies when you have rents like this? Your body becomes more efficient, burns fewer calories, while simultaneously tricking you into eating more. As I said, who needs enemies when you have friends like this? The unfortunate things related to this is it's normal physiological adaptation. What am I saying? This just happens. This is part of the, the process of your body going into a, an, um, a plateau. So hormones change. Fat tissue to uh, lean muscle tissue changes. Met metabolic disadvantage may occur. Metabolic advantage may occur. Some of the things are out of your control, so it doesn't matter. The whole process of just doing the equation regularly will allow you to get where you want to over time. That's all you need to remember. So as it states there, who needs enemies when you have friends like this? True. However, the greatest enemy we ha have is the six inches between our ears. The language that we put in our mind, oh, this is unfair. Why is this happening? The reality is it's just an adjustment. Your body's getting to a position where it is adjusting and adapting. Don't let it bother you. Just move on. Keep looking at what's happening with the fork, how much motivated movement you're doing, where's your mind massage at, how are you holding yourself accountable? Who's in your corner supporting you? And are you doing things daily? 
types of plateaus and the solutions. Now the ears prick up because we're talking about solutions. Before you start training harder or go on some fad freaking diet, consider this. Sometimes your body needs to be pushed harder, but then sometimes the body needs recovery time. One of the videos I've talked about recently on my vlog is this, that one of the reasons that you can be in a weight loss hole is not exercising enough and then exercising too much. So you've got to be able to document. Again, how has my weight journey gone over the last month with me exercising six times a week? Has it plateaued or has it advanced? On the other hand, how has my weight loss journey gone over this last month with me exercising twice a day rather than four times a day? All the information aligns in a simple daily journal. Put everything down on paper and then you can flick through and go, wow, there's the answer. It was right in front of me. But if you're not tracking and you're not watching and you're not reviewing, you're not knowing. A dieted, depleted, run-down, sick, tired and lethargic body doesn't respond the same way as a well-nourished and well-rested body. Remember way back in the um, the video we did on uh, weight training and nutrient timing, and I talked about recovery, repair, re re rest, rehydrate, redo. So remember, they're your, your rest days. They're not off days. They're rest days, recovery days, and rebuilding days. Your metabolic, hormonal, and mental state are not the same. In fact, some of the strategies that work best in the early stages work the least in the later stages, meaning that you have to be able to be testing and measuring, watching what's happening so that you can make an adjustment. If all you ate was chicken breast and broccoli at the start of your journey and that worked for you short term because you were dieted and there was a bit of willpower, months and months and months and years and years later into your journey, living on broccoli and chicken breast is not going to work for you because your body is a much more um, efficient machine. So you need a lot more diversity and variety to avoid dieting and plateauing. Early stage plateau. How do we progress? Your first and second month of your journey, so weeks four through eight. Plateaus here normally mean you ne normally need normally you need some form of progression. More challenge is required. So many people underestimate how ch challenging it is to get lean and healthy. The truth is, it takes a lot of dedication and hard work and groundhog per persistence and tenacity to get the results, and even harder work to continue to making the process. It doesn't get easier as the journey lengthens, guys, because we've just reviewed, haven't we, in a slide or two ago, that the lighter you are, the less food and energy you required because you're feeding or fueling, more importantly, a lighter. Uh, mass, meaning that your basal metabolic rate slows. You may well need to work a little bit longer, a little bit harder, or even a little more frequently, or maybe all of them in a recipe. First, inspect the equation. Always go back to the nucleus, the foundation, the fundamental principle of the whole entire program. Mind massage, nutrition, food, community support, and applied action. Have a look. Can you honestly tick every box and say, I am doing all of these frequently with all of my conviction? Be honest. Inspect the equation, and if there is one standout area you need to work harder on, do so and focus on that until it's under your control so that you've turned that intention of fixing this area into a habit that you no longer have to spend emotional energy on. Secondly, revisit all areas of the equation and smash the plateau, but be honest with yourself. Be careful what you wish for and know what you want. You may need to stick, get stricter across the board, but again, I hasten to state this is the most important one. First, inspect the equation and focus on the one standout area that you're falling down in. If there is multiple areas you're falling down in, focus on one that you feel ready to commit to more than any other. I love this. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. Bruce Lee. I love that. It's like the great Yoda. There is no try. There is only to do. 
I hear it all the time. I'll be sitting down, guys, and I've discussed it with most of you at some stage. I'll be sitting down. Someone will ask a question. You advise... You advise on what's going on, and you say... This is what we need to do, guys. We need to focus on here. And I know, Craig, I know. The reality is knowing is not enough. We have to be in the position where we're making the changes necessary to align to the individual goals you want. And you know, if you're self-sabotaging, it's a great thing when you realize this and you take ownership of this and then you make an action stand. You do something to fix it. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. You must do. What does that mean in plain English? Take action and own your goal. Mid-stage plateau, the yo-yo. So through weeks 8 through 16 of your journey, yes, you have applied further progression and you have challenged yourself more, but it still isn't happening fast enough for you. The next strategy will be this, your body is really starting to adapt to the lower calories and is becoming more efficient in the workouts as well. Temporary increase in carbohydrates, maybe even an increase in fat or proteins. Eating a tad more can give your body the chance to boost the metabolism, reset regularity, uh, regulatory hormones like leptin and ghrelin and all these wonderful things, and gives the mind a rest as well. It keeps you sane. You are not dieting, remember this. So the great thing about this is as you further progress, and look, we're looking at weeks 8 through 12, it may be, as we discussed earlier, you're not eating enough to achieve your goals. You're working harder, your intensity in the gym is harder, you're lifting heavier weights, and therefore we're not fueling efficiently. So we need to put more fuel in the vehicle so it can continue to align to our goals. It needs to perform optimally. So therefore, taking on a little more starchy carbohydrate, it may mean that we get a little extra sweet potato, some little more pumpkin, maybe a little more brown rice. Um, it could be another piece of fruit. These things we need to try to see what's going on your end. And we need to review. So keep your food quality high. Eat more of the same nutrient-dense foods. Try this for one to two days of the week. Raise the carbohydrates around those training times. So an hour and a half to two hours before you train, have a little bit more carbohydrate. And in the meal after training, so not immediately after, but the one after that, maybe put in a little more carbohydrate and then test and measure it. Once we're able to break through the plateau, once you start to see some body fat come down again, your performance is improving, you know, the tape measure's working better for you, the pictures you're taking are looking much more like uh, you'd love to vision, then you return back to base and test and measure again. So you reduce the calorie content you're having through your carbohydrates, and then you keep going. This method is called cycling or yo-yoing. It's been around for eons, as long as um, Hades. So... Don't get caught up on just focusing on what you're eating currently is what you'll eat for the rest of your time. Not at all. As you progress, things change. And if you continue to do the same things, as I've discussed earlier, you'll be really, really gobsmacked when you keep getting to these plateaus and you can't break them. There is opportunity to increase the amount of energy you're eating to enable you for performance to improve, to give you almost like the metabolic pitchfork that you need to get your body moving in the direction that you want to. How cool is that? Strength doesn't come from what you can do. Strength comes from what you overcome, the things you once thought you couldn't. Yeah, it's so cool because this is that um, alteration in that subconscious language. I can't do this. I haven't got the willpower. I haven't got the genetics. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. I haven't got the time. She's prettier than I am. She's got better genetics than I have. You know, she's got all the support in the world. She's got a loving husband. Her kids support her. He's got a partner who understands what he does. Whatever. You need to change the language. This is a personal goal and in many ways a very selfish goal. If you've got a support system that can enable you the strength, the energy, the enthusiasm, the drive to keep you going, that makes it so much easier. Hence, 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 
the equation, communal support. It's there for that reason, aligning yourself to a community of support that is doing what you want done. They're achieving what you want to achieve. The latest stage plateaus, four months and onwards, so 16 weeks plus into your journey, could be a plateau due to overtraining or an adaption to a higher training volume. So many of this happens as we get that fine line in the sand between becoming obsessive and an obsession to an, a well-balanced training and eating regime, a real transform you program. What happens is this, your body can adapt to your training volume and in a similar way it does to a calorie restriction, it becomes very efficient. Remember we talked about in the cardiovascular video, the difference between fat loss and fitness. Fat loss is becoming uh, a very poor user of energy, meaning that you do things that cost your body lots of energy. You don't become very good at things. You need to change your program frequently. You need to change your exercises frequently. So your body does not go, Okay, autopilot I can go on to. Now, I know exactly what Jane's going to do and what Bill's going to do and what Greg's going to do and what Vicky's going to do. I know exactly what's going to happen here because I do it all the time. You need to have breaks and you need to be able to amp your training and amp your food. Not eating chicken and broccoli for breakfast or an omelette for breakfast and then a piece of fruit and some nuts and a protein shake for mid-morning and a can of tuna and some veggies for lunch every day of the week. Diversity is critical in regards to getting different vitamins, minerals and nutrients, different macronutrients and calorie intakes so to align your body to avoiding this efficiency. Cut back on volume in your training or take a full week off everything. Do something called anatomical adaptation. Take a full week off <coughs> Pardon me, guys, again. Take a full week off your normal training routine. routine. So if you're doing two or three weight training sessions a week and two cardiovascular sessions a week, take a break. Just go gentle walking. Go for a gentle swim every day. Do nothing. Just allow your body to reset its normal. You may also need a diet break, as I've discussed. Yes, a subtle change in calories may just shut off the starvation alarm, stimulate your metabolism, and resets the fat burning and starvation hormones. You also get that much needed psychological reboot and pat on the back. So as we've said there, if you're plateaued to have a week off, focus on resetting some new goals and aligning your mind to the process of what you're undertaking, and alter your food a bit. Change the food around. Go for some or more of the seasonal things that are in. Change your proteins around a bit. Choose some different fats to try. Bloody hell, guys, you're not on a diet. Give it a week and then return to your normal. Test and measure and modify based on the data that you've collected. See, solutions, they're all there. You've just got to get yourself this far into the journey, guys. The art of coaxing and progress. Fact, your body will forever be adapting to everything you throw at it, and you will always be working against your body's tendency to remain the same. It doesn't want you to spend its stored energy reserves, guys. It doesn't want you to spend its fat-burning reserves. To continue making progress and reduce the time spent in plateaus, you must change your approach as your body changes. Check these important training and nutrition variables you may need to adjust each week to break plateaus and keep moving forward. Are you ready? Let's look. Training and nutrition variables. Number one, eat less food if you're stuck. No surprise, really, is it? You need to be in that deficit. You need to be spending a little more energy. Use the portions as a starting point. A deficit can come from many ways, eating less or moving more. So if you're not exercising, start exercising. Continue to eat the same and exercise. You don't have to eat any less. How cool, eh? Number two, increase your proteins and reduce your starchy carbohydrates. Things like breakfast cereals, breads, cakes, pastries, potatoes with cream and butter, your pasta in creamy sauces, and a and what will happen with that, you'll get a slight metabolic advantage. By keeping your proteins high and your fibrous carbohydrates, your broccoli, your cauliflower, your corn, your zucchini, your squash, um, your broccolini, your tomato, your celery, your kale, all these wonderful things, your carrot, 
uh, you uh, by increasing your proteins and those fibrous carbohydrates and those important essential fats. What are they? Your omega three and sixes. What are they? So we've talked about fish oils, uh, chia seeds, your flax seeds, your then your omega sixes, your extra virgin cold press olive oil. You, then you've also got your macadamia nut. You've got your avocado nut oils. Fantastic things. Number three, increase your nutrient density. Nourish, not punish. When you're in a calorie deficit, it's massively important to have a, the very best fuel supporting, supplying the energy you need. And remember, by eating a lot of the fiber, fibrous carbohydrates and quality proteins in those essential fats, they help manage and uh, stabilize your blood glucose levels, preventing you from starving and getting into those craving stages so if you're not hungry you can align yourself to your goal much better and if you're not hungry but you're well fueled and nourished you can perform fantastically number four the duration of your cardio most people most people obtain amazing results when they cut with their cardio doing some 20 to 30 minute sessions so like our hit sessions we do in fusion if you if your uh, plateau is stubborn, maybe up the ante a little by adding another five minutes to those session, each session, each week, but no more than 45 minutes, guys, is needed. Test and measure your results. So just have a look at those sessions, and if you're only doing a couple of cardiovascular sessions a week, maybe upping that by five minutes uh, in each of those sessions, maybe all you need to break that plateau. Number five, increase the frequency of your cardiovascular work. If you have already increased the time for each cardio session, then it may be time to increase the frequency of your cardiovascular sessions. To break the plateau, add one more session of cardiovascular exercise to your week on top of what you're currently doing. Daily cardio long time isn't recommended. It's just to break your plateau. So just until the plateau is broken. So if you're not losing your weight, if you're not losing the fat tissue, if the measurements aren't coming down, you only do it for as long as till it starts to happen. Once you've rejigged, reignited, re-enthused, and rewired that metabolism, you don't have to do it any longer. But you need to keep testing and measuring. Increase the intensity of your cardiovascular works. It goes back to the type of cardiovascular work. Hit most uh, time efficient way to break a plateau is to increase how hard the workout's going, not how much you're doing. Make sure number seven. Make sure intensity is prime in the panel beater. Yes, the most important bit. Truly, is. Are you lifting heavy enough and challenge yourself in the gym? RM means RM. That is, it is so important. Repetition maximum. Repetition maximum. So if it's got three sets of eight, you don't just get to eight and stop. It means the weight's too light. If you can just go, I could do more, but I'm going to stop because I've got eight. You need to be getting to six and seven and going, oh my God, am I going to get to eight? The repetition maximum is important, and repetition maximum is what intensity is. Intensity in weight training means how heavy something is, not if you're huffing and puffing like a banshee and sweating like a mule. No, intensity in weight training is about how heavy something is. So my question to you, is the weight training heavy enough and forming you uh, the um, stimuli to change? Make sure the program you're following is tailored to your goal. Is it fat burning and body shape changing? And is it aligned to, uh, to you and allowing you to optimize this strategy? Have a program designed specifically for you. You can't wing this. You can't just rock up to the panel beater, guys, and go through the processes and just go, I might do this today and I might do that tomorrow. It's not going to work. It just doesn't work. Number eight, become very inefficient spending calories. This means change regularly. Don't allow adaptation to store your goal. Remember, your body changes frequently. As your body changes, so does everything else. If you're not changing when your body's changing, don't be surprised if the horrible plateau comes a tapping you on the shoulder. How do you know if the body's changing? Photos, measurements, your food, make a quality uh, assured attempt to align yourself to keeping score. Yes, keeping a journal, test and measure. 
your why. It's not about perfection. It's about effort. And when you implement that effort into your life every single day, that's where transformation happens. That's how change occurs. Keep going. Remember why you started. Look what it says. Effort every single day. Keep going. Remember why you started. Your why. What was the reason you decided to change? Is it you're sick? Is it you're ill? Is it you can't stand to look yourself in the mirror naked? You're appalled by it. Is it that you just focused on your kids? They're your, they're your reason why. You want to be strong, fit, healthy, robust, vivacious, energetic, robust. All of those things to live and love with your partner and your children. All potent wise, absolutely imperative that you realign to your goal and understand why you're doing it. And it's not easy. We've never ever said once that this is easy. The daily implementation of a very simple process is the challenge. So the success tools. Yes, the simplest explanation is almost always the correct one. If fat loss has halted, your body has adapted, and you no longer are in a calorie deficit. The question then is this, what happened to the deficit and what is the best strategy to get you back into the fat burning roller coaster moving once more? To stay motivated and sane, it's important to remind yourself that when you hit a plateau, it's not a bad thing. It's just your body's adapted, it's normal. You simply need to do something different. Measure everything you want to improve. If you want fat loss, you need to be measuring fat loss. If you want weight loss, you need to be measuring weight loss. If you want to change your body shape, you need to be measuring, taking photos, using a tape measure. Use progress charts. Use a weekly feedback loop, a simple food diary, a simple training diary. Hold yourself accountable. You can't get lucky on this. You're not going to be able to click your fingers and say, I wish this is going to occur. It's like any other work in progress. It takes action. And let your results dictate your next move. The data will tell you what you need to do, but you only will know what to do if you've got data to review, to analyze. If you hit a plateau, choose a strategy to reestablish your deficit. Remember this, if you're not losing weight, in most cases, guys, as it states, it's the, the simplest explanation is normally the most accurate. If you're not losing weight, you're either eating too much or not moving enough. If you're not moving at all, simply start moving frequently. That's going to take you into a deficit. Then you'll break the plateau. If you're over-consuming, make some simple adjustments. How? Go back to the food videos, protein, fats, and carbs, and look at the, the portions. Implement them. Whammo. Deficit. How cool. Restimulate your metabolism and restart your progress. You have all the strategies, all the tactics, and all the success tools you will ever need to achieve your goal. Yes, you are now a fat burning specialist. That's what it's about, guys burning fat. There's two and a half kilos roughly of fat there. Fat, toxic, nasty, dangerous, absolutely good for nothing tissue. Yeah. So it's that, patience, consistency, hard work. Well, that's about it, really. Absolutely. Not rocket science at all. Everything you achieved today, heard today, educated on today is what will help you achieve what you want long-term, and I underline long-term. Remember, we started out with um, four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks, all the different plateaus and where you sit and how you can get to where you want to be all the different strategies and tactics to implement to carry you towards your goal. Remember when we touched base this week, have all your questions down so we can discuss all the questions you have on food, on exercise, on plateau, on post-training nutrition, on pre-training nutrition, what's the right type of cardiovascular work, etc. Anything that's important to you, you must share with me so I can help you. I'm not a mind reader. I need you to make your questions relevant and to me so I can assist you with coming up with a solution to carry you well and truly towards your goals. Next week, guys, the last week of the program. How cool. It's the cheat sheet. Everything you need to know across the whole 12 weeks is covered in a cheat sheet and we discuss one of the most secret and most important uh, factors in regards to weight loss, hydration.
So until next week, guys, Fusion Fat Loss and Nutrition Transform You is the only program you need to transform you. I'll speak to you next week, team. Have a great week.